And then hockey is the same thing. Hockey, uh, uh, morning skate is like yeah. 10, 10 to 11 or 11 to 12. Um, um, so that, so that's, that's generally what I get like most of my so there's stuff. There's like an element of timing maybe. Yeah, yeah. And, and some, some dudes, you know, like you can kind of, when you walk in the room, you can kind of get a sense of, of kind of the mood. Like if, if dudes are like, if it's like the sixth game in a row they lost, then it's like, oh man, it's kind of, kind of just going hoping for the best. Because you'll see like a group of reporters asking, "Dude, what's up with, um, you know, yeah, you guys have lost six games. <laughs> you know, why are you? What's going on? Why are you? You know, okay. they ask the same. Sorry, yeah, they ask the same it was, stuff. It was required. Yeah. Right, I should have got my phone. Not, <laughs> whatever. I just wanted <laughs> sanitary. And so. Right. <laughs> oh, that came from my car. It's not that. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It smells like roses. Um, so, so yeah, uh, so yeah, so like, so some guys, you know, um, I, I avoid based on you know the mm -hmm. movement of the of the room. Okay. Now, something you mentioned, you're talking about getting the energy out of a guy, right? Yeah, yeah. How do you? Where does your energy come from, man? You're like all over the place. Oh yeah, um, Captain <laughs> Crunch. Captain Crunch. Captain yeah. Crunch. Red Bull. And, um, Is that just for breakfast or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I put the red like the, in the Captain Crunch. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> so so then it's, does it, it cut the roof of your mouth? I hate. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> no, it does. Yeah. I let it sit in the bowl for a little bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I, I, don't want to get, I don't want to get soggy, though. No, just I let just it like, sit in the bowl. You know, enough to eat it, right? Yeah, yeah. But it, 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 you get like a, like a, 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 it gets wet. Gets, gets wet. <laughs> well, not for it to get wet. Because normally so you, you put it in the bowl, boom, and it gets, it's moist. No, sorry, wet. Now I got to get moist. I got to get the, the milk. Like al dente kind of? Yeah. I get the, the milk, <laughs> milk sort of. <laughs> into the kernels, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, okay, you can drink. But yeah. especially when you have like a big spoon, because I'm. You know, I like little spoons too myself. Well, no, I, I got the big spoon. I, I'm, I'm a big spoon. Yeah. 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 I got the big spoon too. Yeah. 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 So I mean, you're meeting all these people, yes. trying to disarm them. After all these interviews so far, who was who's your favorite interview? Favorite interview is Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Kobe which Bryant one is that. Um, which one in particular? Yes. Um, which one in particular? The limo was pretty good. The limo, yeah, I, 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 enjoy, I enjoy the limo. Um, I think the first time I got to interview Kobe Bryant one on one, we were in Los Angeles in like 06, and he gave me an address to his house, and it was in Compton. And the, it was the first time that like I had time with Kobe, because Kobe has a, like, a pretty crazy schedule. And he, he um, it was two years removed from his whole trial in Colorado. And I don't ever ask, you know, athletes about, you know, controversial things. Because I like to keep it light. Like, I just want to entertain people. Mm -hmm. I let the journalists cover that stuff. Um, but I think that, that particular interview, I think I had about, I think the, the whole tape was maybe 11 minutes, was, uh, was pretty cool. Because I, um, um, Kobe had sort of, he'd been introduced to my style, but, only in short, like little chunks, and then that was the first time we sat down, and had a, an extended conversation, and it was uh, it was a good vibe, man. It was it was cool. I remember like at, at, like after I finished that one, I felt like I felt charged, like it was uh, it was cool. I'm like I'm recalling it right now, and it was yeah. I'm, I'm kind of yeah. I'm bleeding, <laughs> my eyes are getting glossy. I might shed a single tear at some point. This eye though, not this one. That's, okay. that's where it comes from. You said, uh, I'll let the journalists cover that. So that implies to me, you don't consider yourself a journalist? No. no, no. no. What do you consider yourself then? Uh, man. Uh, Captain Crunch Adam. Yeah, 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 probably. <laughs> idiot? Yeah. Is that your official? Why, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's one of the titles. Question. Like, host but like, are you slash okay. idiot. More, more of a host. I mean, I, I don't like, I don't really, there are some super intelligent people in like media and, um, some of them not so much, but but there are some really intelligent people. Do you get criticized when you're at like a, a press conference? No, I don't care. People are like, wait, you're wasting our time, kind of thing. I don't no, care. You don't care about it. No. But you must get like, you know. They they don't really they things. don't people don't really say that much to me. I, like, my producer will often hear it like when people are having conversations amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. But I don't care because like I'm there to do a job, and people at home don't know the process. They don't know what you what goes on behind the scenes. And I don't even really know if they care that much. So I'm there to get my two, three questions in. I got time, you know, I got a credential, so I'm, you know, I'm allowed to be there like everybody else. Mm -hmm. I go in and out. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like respectful of people's time when they're asking questions. I usually wait till like, so like the scrum will form and the, 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 the 
media do, the, the daily beat writers do their thing. I usually wait till afterwards so I can get my time with the guy and not interrupt those dudes who have deadlines, which I do not. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have like immediate deadlines like, oh, I gotta get this clip on the air right now. Yeah. So I just I let them do the thing. But if they don't, if they don't like it, I don't care. But like when you first, because now like you're established, people know who you are. Mm -hmm. But before, when you were just, you know, just coming off your internship, starting the stuff, people, oh. you know, what was it like then? Oh, back then, uh, <laughs> I was a little nervous, but um, and. I used to do, um, I would go, again, I would wait, because I was like, I was young, I was like 24, and I would just wait until everybody was finished with that athlete. And plus, and sometimes, and sometimes I didn't know any better, so sometimes I would just approach a dude and like, not know that, you know, <laughs> some, not works. Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> so, but, you know, you, you, it's trial and error. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but now, I, I am a little bit more established, but I still give, the other dudes their time to do their thing. So, was there any experiments that you've tried when you went to interview, like that that has been shown on there? Like just randomly go to someone and just try it? Oh, uh, that's how a lot of the stuff is. <laughs> yeah, like the first time I talked to dudes, because they, they, especially like American um, athletes, they don't know who I am. I work for a Canadian channel. They don't, most of them don't have satellite or get Canadian television, unless they play in Canada, basketball players or various hockey players. Um, so yeah, the first time I meet a lot of dudes, it's, it's kind of an experiment because you know it's, they they don't know me and they've never seen me before, so they don't know what to expect. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, I I really want to know this question because okay. you I'll try to give you the answer. Okay, that's a good. Thing. Are you guys okay? Am I... <laughs> so I mean, you, you were I feel like I should tell you guys a story or something, <laughs> <laughs> like in the middle, like I can tell a couple stories. Sorry, continue. <laughs> it's all right. Um, you said that. Everyone's noticed that you have established yourself on the score, but you did leave briefly, like yes. I did mention. Yeah. Why did you leave? Oh, at the time, uh, so I left, uh, I worked at the score from 01, or I was doing it on camera stuff from 01 to 02. And then a guy I met was like, I'm doing a, a, a 30 minute basketball show and I want you to host it. I was like, cool. He goes, it's an NBA show. And as soon as he said it's an NBA show, I was like, that's cool because it's a, it's a league. Um, it's a show for the league, and, and the NBA, I really like the, I like the league. Mm -hmm. So before I got the job, I had to send my tape to NBA in New York to get approved, mm -hmm. and, uh, or sorry, the head office in New York. Um, and uh, to, to the decision to leave was, was simple for me, because I got a chance to do something, than, something bigger than just interviewing just normal, everyday citizens that I would see on Bloor West or Danforth. Or Coxwell. Some characters on that. There are some characters, <laughs> yes. Or on, uh, you know, Parliament. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, Parliament and Gerard. Great area. <laughs> um, so, so that that's why I left. I mean, it, it was. I got more money, which was great. And but I got a chance to be the host of a thirty-minute show before it was just like five-minute segments. So that's why I left. And it was an awesome experience going to uh, sports day. So then, why did you return to the sport? I got more money, okay. and uh, and. Um, Sportsnet, um, the, the baseball show that I worked on got canceled, and then the basketball show that I was working on, um, Sportsnet's focus, which st still remains, was really hockey-centric, and the basketball stuff was just getting kind of, was like a, a lower tier, and it hurt, because I was the face of the show, myself and uh, my co-host, Nan, so it's hard not to take that personally, that like, it would just, it would just get... It just didn't have a priority. So then, uh, and I left Sportsnet in February of 05, but in like September and October, my old boss was calling me. He's like, let's, you know, it's a great time for you to come back, blah, blah, blah. And then I got calls from other guys at, at work. So I felt like it always feels good to be wanted. And, um, and my boss was like, you can do what you want. Um, and having that autonomy and that freedom is, is invaluable. Like, I don't know, there 